Good morning, baby birds. Mr. Claney and Mr. Hartline back here in the fabrication lab. You'll notice we got uh, our safety glasses on so you know we're about to do something cool. Little side note, Mr. Hartline and I learned uh, about the safety glasses. If you put your mask on up above, kind of above your nose, and then your glasses down over top of your mask, they won't fog up as bad. But let's talk about the six simple machines. Mr. Hartline, what do we got today? Well, this is a simple machine called the wedge. Basically, we're gonna gain a mechanical advantage by the distance from the point here up to the depth of how far we drive the wedge in. Now, that's the effort distance. The resistance distance is gonna be how wide we split the piece of wood. So this distance across. So let's give it a try, Mr. Claney. Go ahead. All right. Don't hit my fingers. All right, guys. So we drove our wedge down using the sledgehammer. Mr. Hartline, it looks like we drove our wedge about six inches down. Correct. Six inches down. That's the effort distance. The resistance distance is one and a half. So if we take the number six divided by 1.5, we get four. So we have a four to one mechanical advantage. So, as you can see, you can use wedges for different things other than just holding a door open. Nothing. Oh, I'm not that strong. <laughs> Apparently, we do need a wedge. Hey, Mr. Hartline, I got a big race this weekend. I need to change the tires out of my cart. Could you help me get it on the workbench? Sure, let's give it a try. Hey, this thing is heavy. I wonder how heavy it is. Let's check it out. I got this new tool. It's called a spring scale. You ever used one of these before? Oh, I have. So this is kind of like your bathroom scale at home. So you step on the scale and you see how much you weigh by pushing down. This is actually works the opposite way. So if you've ever been to any fishermen out there, you're able to weigh your fish, this works the same way. As I pull down here with my left hand, it registers the weight here. So let's try it, Mr. Claney. I'm gonna pull up and you read the number. Ready? Yep. Man, this thing weighs about 40 pounds. Jeez, that's really heavy. Oh, man. How are we going to get that thing up onto that workbench? Why don't you use an inclined plane? Por que no usan usted las cosas por vial mecánicas? Ay. Oh, why didn't we think of that? That would be so much easier. What can we make an inclined plane out of? Let's see. All right. Now, let's see if there's any mechanical advantage using this incline plane. Okay, I'm going to put the spring scale on again, and you give me an idea of what that number is. Well, when you're pulling at about full speed, it's only about 15 pounds of force. Much easier. All right, let's get to work on changing these tires. I'm going to win. All right, guys. So you probably noticed in your slides when you were studying the six simple machines that one of the things that we talk about is we talk about actual mechanical advantage and we talk about ideal mechanical advantage. Well, if you think about it, the word ideal really means best case scenario. 
whereas actual is what is really happening. So let's take a look at some of these numbers. We'll get some numbers from our incline plane here, and then we'll put them in the pen and paper and show you the difference. All right, so the first thing we need to notice about how high our bench is, and I'm going to say that's about 20 inches, and then we'll need to know how far the length of our ramp is, and we're at about 60 inches there. So 20 inches is our height, and 60 inches is the length of our ramp. All right, let's get to the chalkboard. Yeah, let's get over to the whiteboard and crunch the numbers. So glad we had that ramp to get that go kart up onto our table to get those tires off. If we would have had to lift that straight, straight up and onto the table, that'd have been a lot of work. Well, actually, Mr. Claney, it's the same amount of work. Work is defined as a force times a distance. So if we lift it up the go kart straight up, the force, the effort is higher, but the distance is short. So by making the distance longer on the ramp, the effort was smaller. So yes, it was less effort, but it was the same amount of work. Ah, so I think what you're saying is work is really force times distance. You got it. Uh, I'm learning so much more. I just hope I can learn how to win this race tomorrow. Mr. Cleaning, do you know your batteries are missing? <laughs> All right, Mr. Hartline, so we got our go kart up on the workbench using our incline plane. Now we got to get this thing up in the air in order to get those wheels off. How do you think we should do that? Well, what simple machine haven't we used yet? Uh, we did lever, we did pulleys, incline plane, wedge. What's the last one? I know, a screw. But how are we going to use this to get that up in the end? Oh, well, you're right. The screw is this, another one of the six simple machines. And a screw like this, a fastener, is used to hold parts together. So whether we're um, assembling an automobile or we're putting a deck together or building something around the house, the screw actually clamps parts together. And that's the work we're doing is holding parts together. So. I am talking about a screw, but I'm talking about something like this. Ah, well, how does this thing work? Well, this is a screw jack. And just like your threaded fastener, this jack has screw, a screw in the middle. And what happens is as I turn this handle, I turn the screw. And as I turn the screw, it's threaded into this part, which draws these two parts together, effectively raising this up. You want to see how it works? Yeah, especially if it's my new tires on. Okay, so all I have to do is turn this handle. And as I turn the handle, you can see how the jack moves upward. Is that high enough? A little more. I think that'll get it done. But as I watch this jack work, I really think about what's going on. And what we actually have is we have a cylinder and one of our other six simple machines, an inclined plane. And what's really happening here is we have our inclined plane 
and it simply wraps around our cylinder to create a screw. And that's how we got my go-kart off the ground. That's 500 IQ, Mr. Claney. So these ridges here that are represented by the inclined plane are really just the same as the screw threads, right? Yeah, I think that's exactly how this works. Man, let's get these tires off so I can win this race. I absolutely dominated that go-kart race. I need to thank my sponsors. I need to thank my crew chief, Mr. Jeff Hartline. And of course, I need to thank the six simple machines. I need to thank the screw. I need to thank the wedge. And I need to thank the incline plane. Oh, hey, don't forget the lever. And don't forget the pulley. And don't forget, of course, the wheel and axle. Oh, we dominated Mr. Hartline. F5.